Welcome back to the next video in our UI and UX series. Now, in the previous video, I discussed the various different types of components that there are um, and just kind of ran you through some of the, the good things to know. What I want to do in this video is just bring it to life a little bit more. I want to show you some of the components and how you would put them together live in Webflow. I just want to show you what each component can do, maybe a few of the styling options, and, um, and hopefully it just gives you a bit of a sense of how it works and how these things fit together. It's definitely not going to look great. I'm just kind of winging it here in terms of design. It's not a design that I've planned out or looked up. Um, so I'm definitely just winging it a little bit from that perspective. So it's going to look pretty ugly. But what I more want to, to give you is just the impression of how do you go from a um, you know a blank canvas into something that, that starts to look and feel like an app. Um, and another only other thing kind of worth noting before we crack on is, so this tool is Webflow. Um, it's not the tool that I would recommend if you are absolutely just starting out. If you're a designer or have used design tools like Figma or Sketch before, by all means, give it a go. But if you're a complete non-designer and a complete non-techie, this is not the best tool for you to begin with. Maybe look at a card, look at a Dallow, look at Glide. Um, Webflow, I'd more recommend once you've made a couple of things already and you're, you're kind of ready to take on a, a slightly bigger learning curve. Um, it is just quite complex, you know, most no-code tools are not going to be as daunting uh, as this is. Um, with that said, we do have a brilliant kind of basics of Webflow uh, tutorial for you to look at from a kind of no-code perspective, so take a look at that. And uh, all I would say is, you know, don't pay too much attention to the whole interface, don't worry that you're not maybe picking it up and that I'm not explaining it. You know, more just pay attention to some of the styling option because Although Webflow has a lot more styling options on this right hand side than pretty much every no-code app out there, a lot of them are common and so I'll be able to show you just how I think about it and how I work with it. So let's go ahead and get started. Now if I open this down the left here, we have a, a few different components, many of which will look familiar, some of which won't, but they'll look familiar because I showed you some of them in the previous video. So we looked at div blocks, buttons, headings, etc. Now we're going to start here uh, with our kind of you know base layouts. So we've got a section, for example, if I drag that in, so we don't going to put it in the body. And by the way, the body is just the absolute base page. It's just like the canvas. It's a bit you start on. Um, you then kind of layer everything else on top. Now the body by default is white. Um, as a result, this section is completely unstyled. It is its color set to transparent, as you can see down here. Um, you know, there, there's just there's nothing to it at all. So if I hit a preview button, and the preview is just going to show us what this would look like if it were an actual launched website, I'll see nothing but white. So let's go ahead and um, add something into that. So if we drag our heading in here, so immediately what happens is the heading just jumps straight over to the left side of the page. We do have it here. It's got a little bit of text. It says heading one. Let's hit preview, and it's right over there. Cool, brilliant, good start. Now. Typically what you want to do, let me just delete that for now, typically what you want to do is structure this a little bit. So let's go ahead and put a container in. And if you remember what I said in the previous video, uh, oops, not dragged that properly, yeah, I have. If you remember what I said in the uh, previous video, a container is essentially a little bit like a block that kind of centers on the page. Now, again, if you're a designer, if you're a developer, you know that's not quite the right explanation. But as a non-technical person, it's a good way to look at it and think about it. It's just going to let you keep things nice and neat. It's going to leave a bit of margin at the side. Um, it's a really good way to just build a beautiful website that looks how most websites look today. So we're going to do a couple of things here. Um, let's first of all just put our text in, just to give you an idea of how this works. So you remember it was right over on the left a second ago. Well, uh, that's how it would look. Let me put it in the container and you immediately see it jumps here into the center. Now, if I just hit the center alignment on the container, uh, what happens is the text jumps into the middle. And there's a couple of things to pay attention to here. First of all, you'll notice I aligned the container, not the heading. What happens is um, you have this hierarchy of elements. So this heading is inside the container, and this container is inside the section. Um, and if I open this little navigator chart here, you can kind of see that, you know, sections inside the body, containers inside the section, headings inside the container. And so anything that I set um, as a style on the left here, like for example, set all text to go uh, center, that'll apply to everything inside the container. So I could have set that in the selection and it would have applied to the container and everything within the container. Um, 
but if I only set that on the heading, it'll only apply to the heading. So the thing is, if I put any more text inside this container, it'll immediately center. Whereas if I'd set it on the heading, I'd have to set it on every heading. Sometimes that's the right thing to use. Sometimes it, it's a handy to kind of set it for the whole element. Don't worry too much about that. In some ways, it's a quicker, work, uh, quicker web flow. In other ways, it is how no-code apps tend to work. So I'm going to do a couple of things here. Now, um, the first thing we do actually set a little bit of color just to kind of bring this to life a little bit. Now, one of the things I like to do is somebody who, again, is a bit of a non-designer, picked up some skills along the way, but broadly, don't really know what I'm doing with design. You know, one of the things that I like to do is go on this website here. Now, I found this on nocode.tech. Um, it essentially is a color palette generator. So I can just hit the space bar. It'll bring up, a, you know, whatever different um, color palettes it can come up with. I quite like this one. This one's got some interesting colors. So let's go ahead and play with it. Now, as I said, this is probably not going to look beautiful when I'm finished with it, but hopefully it just gives you an idea of how these things tend to happen. So when I clicked out there, it gave me this thing, uh, this hex code. And a hex code is just really a way of translating a very, very, very specific color into a series of numbers that I can then use for the background. So rather than just saying red, blue, green, I can get these really nice nuanced colors. And you can see, although I've got basically two browns on the page, they're very nice looking, very attractive. So let's have a look at that from a, a no-code point of view. So what we'll probably do, what color was that? Yeah, what we'll probably do is... Um, we're going to take the brown and we're going to apply that to the container. So if I go in the container, currently it's transparent, I can change that, um, so I can click this, I can take the hex, I can hit enter, and it's going to immediately change that to the brown, and as you can see, it looks exactly like the brown on, on this page. Let's take this green, and what I'm going to try and do is make the brown, the brown sit on the green. So I can go ahead and make my section green, and what this will immediately do is actually just quite nicely for your eyes divvy up where the boxes are. So you can see a couple of things, right? There's no space between this green and this brown, and there's very limited space, between, uh, space sorry, between the heading and the container. So I can do a couple of things. We have this concept uh, called padding and margin. Now, one of the things that happens in a container is the margin on the left and right immediately gets set to um, auto. And the reason is, whenever you go to a different size, uh, a responsive size, no matter the size of the screen, it'll always keep that content in the middle of the screen. That's what it's really good for. It's less about centering and more about just keeping that content in the middle. Um, so what we can do with our section is we can immediately set pargin, uh, pargin, padding and margin. Now, one thing to note here, you notice how these have all got a kind of blue box around them. When I do this head and it puts a blue box around it as well. Now, no code, eh, no code, Webflow is drawing that blue box. But typically, every component on the web is actually just within a box and you're stacking those boxes on top of each other. I kind of alluded to this in my last, um, my last video, which I know is a little bit confusing. So let's try and bring it a little bit to life here. You know, if I, this, clearly if I look at this container, this heading fills it. So if I take another heading, I'm just going to copy this one, Control C, and we press Control V. It immediately goes in another line, even though heading could fit next to it, because these are all blocks. One of the things that I can do up here, not every tool has this option, but I can set various different blocks. So right now, it takes up a full line of the container. Um, if I was to put that outside the container and put it in a section, uh, the box will take up the full uh, width of the section. And no matter how wide it is, it'll essentially take up the entirety of its parent element. Uh, and the section is the parent to the container. The heading is the parent to, uh, sorry, the, the the heading is the child to the container. The container is the child to the section, and then back the other way for parent. So it just gives you an idea, right? Um, but. Because of that, you kind of have to either uh, think about it as blocks, you either have to put it in line. So if I put that in line and I put that in line, these will jump up next to each other. But now these two blocks are going to touch each other. So let's let's go back to where we were. Let's get rid of this second heading and let's kind of talk a lot about, about margin and padding. So if you think of everything as a box, margin is all the space around the block, uh, around the box, and padding is all the space within the box. So you know, if I want uh, if I want this container to push itself off of the section and further down the page, I can simply set the margin, let's say, to 50. Um, and if I actually, uh, actually, let's do it a different way. If I take the section first and let's set the pattern on that, because that's a little bit cleaner. So if I do that to 50, what it's going to do is it's going to keep the section 
essentially where it was, but it's going to push everything within the section down, and that means it's going to create a bigger uh, section. You know, if, I, if that's 50 and I say it's 100 now, it will push down more and more. And so the other thing that I can do is I can just say, well, let's do the padding on the bottom as 300 pixels, and that's going to create this nice big uh, open space. Um, and technically, you can just have it, uh, you know, left. But what will happen is everything within that section will just, you know, if I put more elements in there, if I make the container bigger, it's always just going to continually push this down and down and down until it hits, you know, the end of the page or until I create a new section. So I've got a container. Let's start looking at some of the other elements that we have. Uh, so we've talked a lot about, about paragraphs, for example. If I go ahead oops, and uh, drag a paragraph in there, now, immediately we see a few things happen. First of all, the paragraph's its own block, so it's going to just push itself to be the complete width of the container. There's a couple of things I can do to shorten that. Um, you know, I could shorten this so that it pushes 50 pixels in that way uh, and uh, 50 pixels in that way. And let me point out an interesting thing. So the box has now moved to here. Because I've set margin, it's pushed me 50 off of the container. Technically, you could set the, pa the padding and you'll see the text moves over from the uh, from the side of its own box. And I'm just going to control Z that back to where it was, undo. But we've quickly got something here, so let's just say uh, this is a no-code app. I am uh, demonstrating how Webflow can put various components together to create something. Um, and let's just put just to put, create some distance, yada, yada, yada. Um, and then we'll just change this heading to say, this is my first no-code website, which thankfully isn't true, or I probably wouldn't be teaching this. But um, let's have a little look at this. So you might, you might say this paragraph's a little bit close to this heading. You've got a couple options then. Um, you could use the, uh, the margin to push the paragraph down a little bit. Uh, oops, so let's just do that. Sorry, it's 25. So you could use that to push it a little bit. You could equally use the margin to push up and away from that heading. So you can really push it both ways, but we've just put a little bit of space there. Um, and uh, actually, I'm going to take that out. It doesn't look very nice, does it? So once we've got that, we can then start to look at other components. And you can immediately see, by the way, you know, we've immediately put margin and padding in here. We've put it in here. Like, this has quickly went from a blank canvas into something that just with a few components and styling options, you know, it's starting to take some shape. So let's have a look at some of the other components we've got. Um, now, one of the ones I talked about is a div block. And a div block is quite different uh, from some of the nuances of the, um, the container. And the reason for that is, so a div block essentially is in a way its own container. The only difference between a div and a container is a container has its uh, margins on either side set automatically so that it's always centered, as I say. A div block has no such restriction. It can go anywhere. You can make it any size. So what we could do is we could have uh, several of these div blocks and we could put them all inside the container. We could make them all different sizes. You know, I could make that 100 pixels wide and I could make it uh, 50 pixels high and that's just going to make this tiny wee box over here. Equal, I could undo that. Um, I could make it, you know, 100 pixels high. I could make it 33% wide. Uh, I could do probably the same thing with this. I could make this 33%, make it 100 pixels high, make this a uh, 33%, 100 pixels high. And, uh, you know, essentially you're just going to end up with these three boxes down the side here. Now, the interesting thing is you can put a div within a div. So I could bring another div box out here. And this is, again, this might feel confusing, but all we're really doing is putting blocks on top of each other with Lego. But I've got this other div block. It expands the whole way. So what happens now if I take this div and I put it in here, and I take this div, and I put it in my div block as well, and I take this one underneath it. Well, it doesn't really look all that different. We've just kind of ended up with the same thing, except now it's all in a bigger div block. But the interesting thing is we can now use this div block to do different things to these other blocks. Now, what I'm going to do is just give all of these the same class. Um, and a class is just, you don't really have to worry about it. It's a Webflow thing, um, which just lets you sort of style elements all at the same time together. Again, if you really want to use Webflow and try it out, we'll kind of talk about this in our 
um, other videos, but it just gives you a quick idea. Um, and Webflow itself, by the way, has an amazing university of its own that's really, really good at just teaching you how it works. I mean, it's really top quality content. But we can do all sorts of things. Now, don't worry too much about these options again. I'm just going to play around with it. But I can do this thing called a flex layout, and that's essentially going to let me put these three blocks in a row. So let me undo that, just so you can see what happened. Put a little, actually, I'll put a little uh, colour, a little border around them. Um, so one of the things we can set is a border, and that's just going to draw a line around the boxes. I'm just going to go ahead and make that blue, just so it's, actually let me look at red, just so it stands out. Um, so we've got these three red ones, and what I can do is, again, don't pay too much attention to this, but I can click that, and that's going to put them all in a row. Now, the individual option doesn't matter. There's a bunch of different ways you can put them um, that will make them display in various different ways. But now that I've got these three blocks, I can kind of do whatever I want with them. Now, I'm immediately feeling like my divs are right at the bottom, so I kind of want to put a bit more padding into my container. So I'm just going to do that, and that will space it out a little bit. And then let's go ahead and put a button into the div. So I can put that there. Now it's immediately a wee bit close to the top, so let's just space it out a little bit. Let's put this as 20 pixels, not a little bit more, 30 pixels, and there we go, it's kind of right in the middle. I'll change that to say click me. Now my button is not very good looking, so let's see what we can do to improve the visuals. So if we get anything in here we could use, let's make it pink. Will that look good? Probably not, but let's try it. So we go ahead, take the button, we can immediately mess about with the colour. Uh, you know, we can make that pink, we get click me. Um, one of the things that I can do, now this is really interesting and important, I'm going to show you this in a couple of elements. Um, one of the things that's really good just to make a design look nice is putting shadows and radius on it. So we can put, for example, a radius in this button and that's just going to start curving the corners um, from a, for a certain amount of pixels. So if, if you look at it right now, it's really square. You see that? Now if I take that and make the radius 8, suddenly we've got this rounded button that's nice and rounded. So I can take that, uh, I can put that in here, and put that in here, and I'm actually, I'm able to configure this button, uh, so I can configure it to go to like a certain URL, so I could have that, so when I click it, it goes to google.com for example. Now don't worry too much about that, that's just an example of how a button can do something, but now that we've put our various different buttons in here, let's play a bit more radius. Let's put a radius on the container, and then I'm going to show you how a shadow works. So if I go to the radius, I'm going to do a really big radius here because it's a big container. Let's hit 25. Now look at the box. You can only see the box is still drawn around it, but now it's curved out from the box. Similarly, you can see a slight, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, um, but there's a slight gap there uh, on the button box. I've only did four pixels there, so it's less pronounced, but up here, it's really pronounced. You can see how you can see how the shape visible on the website starts to look very different from the sort of block that it's actually in. And if I go ahead and just preview that, you'll see them. Now it doesn't stand out as much as I, as I would like, so let's go ahead and play with a shadow. Now, as any designer watching this will know, it is quite hard to get a shadow looking just right. I'm going to experiment with it a bit. Now you'll see the minute I've clicked shadow, it's put one on and it's kind of got this line around it. It doesn't look amazing. Let's see if we can make that look a little bit better. And I'll give you some of my crappy tips. The first one is just make it black but reduce the opacity. And as you watch me do that, um, look at how the shadow sort of disappears around about underneath that box. I'm going to put it to somewhere around there. So immediately we've got a shadow. Looks okay. Uh, you can now play around with the distance. So you can try, uh, let's just put a massive one on this, see what it looks like. So you can see suddenly a big blur of the shadow. Now, what does distance, size and blur mean? I don't really know. I just play around with it until it works. Uh, but no, seriously, uh, in other videos we'll kind of cover that sort of thing in more detail. But you can do things like, if you watch the shadow, I'm now moving out the angle of it, so I can play around with that. Um, and it just lets me bring this to life a little bit more. So, I'll hesitate to call to say this is starting to look good. That's probably not quite true, but you can start to see how minor adjustments are making a difference, you know. Let's just put a little bit more padding on it, for example. And everything just shapes up nicely in the middle. And let's put a little bit more padding on the top. You know, this is starting to look okay. You're starting to see how this could work. Now let's play with some other elements that we've got. Uh, I want to play with a nav bar. We talked about a nav bar. So here's a nav bar here. 
And what I can do is just drag that right up uh, to the top. Now, one of the things that I'm going to do is take away the padding on my section because because I've put this in the section, it is pushing my nav bar down. You see how the padding's there? So if I have a quick look at my hierarchy checker, my nav bar is in my section. So I've got a couple of options actually. I could, I could drag this out of the section and then it goes right to the top or I could have fixed that, uh, that padding. But we're going to play around with a couple of things here and uh, and just make our nav bar work. I'm going to move my big face out of the way, but you can just immediately see we've got home, we've got about contact. Let's have a little look. What colors have we got? Let's select this color. And then what I can do is I can just set my nav bar to uh, brown. Now, you might want to change things again in there. So you've got various different elements. I mean, you'll kind of, if you look at this, it's going to kind of show you uh, how it works in mobile, etc. And I'll go down to that in a second. Um, actually, let me just show you that now. So here's an app bar on, on desktop. Here it is on mobile. Um, now, if I was going into the preview mode, I can open that and you'll quickly see it drops down just like that. We're not too worried about responsive design. That's not really the point of this. So just a quick idea to show you how it looks. But you know, you can go in there. Uh, you can obviously change the various different colors, etc. Uh, oops, that was a background I changed there. There's a common mistake. I'll change that back to transparent. Sorry. Try that again. You can change the back, the color. You can change that one to white. Um, and that just gives you again a wee idea of how these components look. So that's your nav bar. Um, and much like the button, if I go into the configuration side, it's going to let me put in, you know, I don't know, my cool website dot tech slash contact. You know, you can put all sorts of different stuff in there. You can also specify an email address to open, a phone number to call if it's on mobile, etc. So there's a bunch of different stuff you can do, but you know, you can kind of start to see how this website would come together. You know, I can drag a heading in there. Put it in the brand, but you know, I can drag that heading in there. I can say that heading should be, well, let's first of all say, you know, no code app. You know, I can immediately just go, ah, kind of the black looks okay if you're trying to like a coffee look or something, but you know, you can do white. And there you go, and that just, I'm doing white just because it shows up fairly well. Again, it's ugly. Why is that not centered? Why is this so big versus that, etc. But it's just giving you an idea. Now let's look at some other components just to round up. Uh, so we've talked about various different types of text and we've played around with them. Um, I can take a link, for example, just drag that in just to show you. Uh, you can put a link in there. Um, and that's, you know, I'll just do this as a link and it looks like a link because it's got an underline, it's blue, it's really ugly, uh, but we'll leave it there. Um, and we can also do a rich text box. Now I'm going to drag this in and take it back out because it'll be really ugly. Actually, I'll just leave it. But that just shows you, you know, it, this is kind of Webflow's instructions on what a rich text box is, but it kind of just shows you, you know, it can do static dynamic content. Um, you can put images in there, all sorts of things. Speaking of images, let's have a little bit of a look at them. And I'll maybe demonstrate what I was talking about around the difference between an image and a background image. So I can choose an image. It should give me some defaults here. Ah, it won't. Uh, I'm not going to bother poking from my computer to find one. But you can kind of see the placeholder is there. Um, and essentially, you know, you can do anything you like with that element. It's centered because the container is centered and um, you can move it around. But the other thing that you can do, and I really like this, I think this is quite cool, is you can take a div block. And a div block, again, can be just anything. So you can take a div block and let's say we wanted to make that, uh, let's make it blue. Just bear with me here. I can make that blue and then I can set the radius to 999. And uh, what should happen as if I also then set the width to, let's say, 60, and I set the height to 60, it's going to turn into a circle. Now, I can do things like uh, I could have put a, I can put a background image on that by hitting image. Um, again, I've not got anything on there. Uh, let me just drag an image in. Let me see if I can find a quick image. Is that an image? Can I steal that? Yes. I think I can. Nope, I can't. Let me just grab an image, uh, Google Images, uh, let's just search for a logo, oh there we go, there's a Google image, uh, Google Chrome logo, I'll well, grab something here, uh, let's take this logo, and I'm just going to uh, uh, let me save that image, pop up my meta computer I'm sure in a second, nope. 
So I've got that, it's just downloading. I'm just in Google Chrome, so it might look familiar. Let's just drag this in here. All right, did that load? Yep, it did. Cool, we've got an image. So, we're going to specify this as an image. Now, you immediately see it goes white. And let's just pull, I just want to bring that into an actual image block to show you some of the difference here of how these images work and how they interact. Because this is quite key if you're ever building for the web. And even if you're building an app, you'll probably build a website. So it's good to know. So you can immediately see the image expands, the image block expands to hold the whole image. Whereas this radius has done nothing so far. But what I can do in this div block with the radius set is I can choose between some options. So cover, for example, will uh, fill the entire block with image, but contain will let me basically squeeze it in. And you'll notice it's tiled there, i.e. there's multiple. If I just turn the tiling off, and uh, if I set the position to go into the middle, then what's going to happen here is it's going to take this square um, logo image and turn it into a circle. Now there's one obvious problem here, uh, which is that the, um, there we go. So yeah, if I hit that to cover, what it will do is it will basically expand it as close in as it needs to be to cover it. But what I was going to say is if I hit contain there, Clearly, there's an issue whereby um, it's it's trying to it's trying to get the whole image contained within that tiny block. So there's two things I can do. I can either set this to be bigger um, to fit the image, and that will kind of again it'll make it more visible, but it won't expand the full thing. So what I can do is I can just set that color to white because I know the background is white, and that will look right. Again. I might not necessarily know what size my image is going to be before I do it, and so therefore cover is a good bet. But you can immediately see, you know, we've got the square image here, and it's expanded to fit the full size of the image. I can shrink it down, but it's really good for kind of finding that, but you know, I can kind of drag it up and down. But this logo is actually a div block. I've made it a background image. I've put a radius on it to make it a circle, and you can immediately see, see how that works. You know, I could copy that. Uh, let's see if this works. I could paste it in here. And there you go. You know, I've got my I've got my image there. It's obviously pushing down, um, but you know, you can immediately see how how this kind of comes together. Um, let me just put a wee bit of pad in there just to show you what I'm talking about. Again, this is going to look dreadful, <laughs> uh, but I just want to give you an idea of how these things fit together. You know, that's sixty pixels, sixty pixels, um, and there you go. So. We've had a quick look at some of the various different elements. Um, probably the one the last one I'll just show you is let me clean this up a little bit. And <laughs> this is a terrible looking website, isn't it? Um, let me just clean this up a wee bit and uh, I'll show you a form. So what you do with form is you've got to drag it in, first of all, as a form block. It's going to immediately come along with a couple of default fields. So we've got our name field, we've got a text input, we've got a field, a label, another text input, we've got a button. Um, you know, we can immediately do things to style that button if we wanted to. Uh, but let's have a look at some of the fields that I can pull into that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for example, I can pull in a, a radio button, I can drag that in there. Um, and it's just got the button over here, so I can just do control, paste that, we've got one, so we could do, you know, yes, for example, um, and do no, and that's just going to give you your radio buttons and how they work. Let's have a look as well at the select fields, because we talked a fair wee bit about that. So you can just drag that in there again, just as I say. Um, and one of the things you can do here is, if I go into configuration, I can just specify each different choice. So I could say, you know, a, whoops, I can say this should be choice one. And you remember how we talked about key value pairs in the variables lesson? You might not have seen that yet, depending on, on if you're going through this chronological or not, but we talked about key values. Well, here's an example of a key value. The identifier is going to be choice one, but the data that gets sent underneath is going to be the value. It's just going to be first. Um, you know, it's simply, again, just a second choice. I'm just going to do choice two. Um, and I'm going to say the value that should be sent is 2. Now, we're not going to see that value going anywhere because this is not a workflow lesson, but it just gives you an idea of where those key value pairs start to come out in, uh, in, the, in the wild. So if I select that, I've got choice 1, choice 2. I've still got third choice in there. Um, you know, I could delete that third choice if I didn't uh, want it. So I could delete that, go back to my preview, and there you go. There you have it. So... 
I really just gives you an idea of how these how these kind of tend to fit together, um, how these UI kind of components look, how they work. Um, you know, best advice I can give you is experiment with it yourself. I, I think one of the key takeaways for me is, you know, notice notice how easy it is just to make it look good by putting a bit of a radius on it, using a couple of contrasting colours, using a shadow. You know, I think these palettes are really, really good because they'll give you contrasting colours. If I hit that again, um, you know, these colours would contrast each other. I could easily change the website to some of these and it would look really good. So, um, you know, if you're trying to just make your app look good, again, if you don't know much about design, it's going to take a wee while. We will try and get some design lessons in the library to help you, but it is obviously going to take a little while. But, you know, play with radius, play with shadows, play with colours, um, play with a bit of space, and, you know, putting just blank space in is one of the best things you can do. And, uh, and hopefully it's going to make your design look just right. So... Um, in the next video, we're going to talk a little bit about repeating data lists and how they work. After that, we'll come back into Webflow to demonstrate that. Um, as I say, we've got plenty of other videos on Webflow, so check it out. You might also want to check out university.webflow.com, which is their really, really cool, um, their, their kind of own support site. It's really, really good, really high quality stuff. If you want to learn Webflow, we'll certainly show you how to turn Webflow into no-code apps. But if you really want to learn how to use Webflow to design, absolutely check their content it's going to be miles better than ours um certainly at current so take a look and uh, i'll see you in the next video